Hey brothers and sisters, this is Pastor Patrick uh, coming to you, brothers and sisters, to bring the Word of God forward as we celebrate another Resurrection Day, hallelujah. First day of the week, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was resurrected. Praise God, early in the morning on the first day of the week, brothers and sisters, there was an earthquake. <laughs> oh, and the stone was rolled away, hallelujah. Hallelujah, that's why they said, come and see. Come and see where the body laid. Hallelujah, come and see the stone has been rolled away. He is not here, for he is risen. Hallelujah, praise God. Praise God Almighty, he has conquered. Death, hell in the grave. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah, and that day is coming, brothers and sisters. As the Apostle Paul tells us, when the rapture happens... When it'll be finalized, when death will be swallowed up in victory. You know, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? They've been swallowed up. Hallelujah. In the victory, what we call the rapture, brothers and sisters, is also the resurrection. Praise God Almighty. Praise God Almighty for the resurrection of the church, of the true bride of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Brothers and sisters, just to tell you, FYI, those who are dead in Christ, people who have died already, they're already there with the Lord in their spirit body as a spirit man, but not with their resurrected body. That's why they're going to descend with the Lord. That's why they're coming first. Their bodies will come out of the grave wherever they are. As Jesus said in John chapter 11, hallelujah. You know, I was praying with a sister yesterday, and this is the text the Lord gave me. And then that sister told me, Hey, this is the same text the Lord used to save me like 20-something years ago. It's when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, the time is coming when the Son of Man will call all those out of the grave. Hallelujah. For He's the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Though a man be dead, yet shall he live. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God Almighty. I want to say this too, brothers and sisters, because the topic that I've been on for the last two weeks, this is the third week the Lord's had me on the topic of resurrection. brothers. And you know, we're talking about the rapture. You know, a lot of times we only talk about resurrection at Easter. You know, or, you know, at the time that the Lord was resurrected, the first day of the week after the Passover. Hallelujah. But the resurrection that we're talking about that's coming soon Hallelujah, as the Lord was the firstborn among many brethren, the firstborn from the dead. Hallelujah, we shall follow Him. Hallelujah, on that resurrection day, praise God Almighty, that day, what a day that will be. Hallelujah, when the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven and with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first, as I was just talking about, and those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air, so shall we forever be with the Lord. Wherefore? Or therefore, in modern English, comfort one another with these words, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16, 17, and 18. Paul says in the beginning of that text, you know, someone is, you know, people have been trying to tell you that the, the you know, uh, the day of the Lord's already passed. It is not passed. He tells us in 2 Thessalonians. It is not passed until that starts with the rapture of the church. Then the day of the Lord will begin. You know, there are people who message me, brothers and sisters, people on YouTube who are not pastors, who are not called by God. They'll get on there and say, well, the rapture is going to be when the Lord returns because it says the day of the Lord. Excuse me, but the day when the Lord is with a thousand years of man, Peter tells us, and a thousand years of man is with, as a day with the Lord. The day of the Lord, my friends, is the thousand year reign of Christ, including... That seven-year tribulation period, that's the day of the Lord. It kicks off with the rapture, then you have the seven-year tribulation and the thousand-year reign of Christ. That is the day of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Not one calendar, 24-hour day that we have on earth. Oh, God has used the simple things to confound the wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is marvelous in our eyes. As he said, the stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. And this is marvelous. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. The Lord Jesus in Matthew quoting there from Zechariah. Praise God almighty brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Yeshua is the stone that the builders have rejected. Jesus Christ. Yeshua in Hebrew. Yeshua in Aramaic. 
Brothers and sisters, what I was going to tell you, there are people like Jehovah's Witnesses and people on these uh, false uh, self-appointed uh, theolog high theologians on YouTube who are trying to talk about soul sleep. That's a doctrine of Jehovah's Witnesses as w and other groups, other cults. When you die, that's it. You cease to exist. You're asleep in the ground. And then, and then at the resurrection, you come back alive again to go to hell or... You know, they don't even believe in hell. They believe in annihilism. If you die and you're evil, there's no hell that you just, you just cease to exist. Brothers and sisters, that's not true. For what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? All you got to do is go to the Bible. Go to the Word of God. The, and I'll say this again. I always say this. The problem in this Laodicean last day church age is people don't open their Bible. They don't read their Bible. They don't know the Word of God. A hundred years ago, it was normal and common. People quoted from the Bible all the time. As an example, here in the modern day, you go listen to these uh, talking heads on television, and sometimes I've heard several different talking heads who would quote from Abraham Lincoln. When Abraham Lincoln said about the Civil War, he said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And there are people, and you can read books by scholars and listen to them talk, they'll accredit that statement to Abraham Lincoln. When in reality, brothers and sisters, in the lifetime of Abraham Lincoln, everybody knew he was quoting from the words of Jesus Christ. It was commonplace. Only in the United States since the 1950s, 1960s, is the average American don't even know that those words belong to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A house divided against itself cannot stand. For if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, hallelujah, then it wouldn't work because a house divided against itself cannot stand. But if I cast out demons or devils by the finger of God, know that the kingdom of heaven has come near you, the Lord said. Hallelujah, praise his name. So when the Lord was speaking to the different groups, brothers and sisters, there during the Passion Week, Matthew, after the Lord went in on Palm Sunday, he, he debated there and he called them a brood of vipers and snakes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law there in the temple, he, can, he said, woe unto them over and over again. You know, woe unto you, you brood of vipers, woe unto you. You know, all of these things he said to them, he called them snakes. All these other things the Lord said to them. And in that time period, they kept challenging him. Now, brothers and sisters, there was the Pharisees. So Paul was a Pharisee. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection. We see Paul pitting the Pharisees and Sadducees against each other at the Sanhedrin when he was brought before the Sanhedrin, when they wanted to kill him uh, later on in the book of Acts. So we see that the Pharisees are not fair, you see, because they think that they're the only righteous people, that everybody else was born in sin, and everybody else is evil but them. The Sadducees are sad, you see, because they did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. And then there's the Herodians, which was a political branch of Judaism, and they sponsored and supported Herod, King Herod. That's why they're called the Herodians. And there were other sects, like the Essenes, which were up there at the, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And they were a radical group who believed lots of wacky stuff, that Jesus is a lesser God. As a matter of fact, there's somebody that people mistake for a Hebrew scholar on YouTube who says you've got to be a vegetarian to be saved. Who is following these false doctrines of the Essenes, this cult of the Essenes, which jo uh, uh, Josephus Flavus came out of that group. He was the only one who surrendered. The rest of them killed themselves or were killed at, Mas at uh, Masada there when they had their standoff at the, at the end of the Roman invasion of Israel there in about AD 70, 72. And then he went on to become a historian. And that's where we get a, you know, extra biblical historical evidence of Christ and all these things from the writings of Josephus Flavus there from Rome. Anyway, brothers and sisters, his books are called the Antiquities or whatever it is, History of the Antiquities of the Jews. Uh, anyhow, so when the Sadducees came to Jesus and questioned him and Matthew, they said to him, they asked him this question. They said, there was a man who had a wife, and then he died without producing an heir. See, in Israel, under the law, only the men could maintain the land. And then under the law, if a man died... His brother was to sleep with that woman, his sister-in-law, and produce children with her, but they would not be his children, but they would be the children of his brother. So if he had a boy with his sister-in-law, after his brother-in-law had died with no children, if his sister-in-law and brother already had a son, then he wouldn't do that. But if they died childless, just like the story with Judah and his daughter-in-law, Tamar, 
the, the brother, the next in line brother, is responsible for raising up heirs for his brother. He would sleep with his sister-in-law under the law of Moses, and when she had a son, then that son would be the heir, and then that would get the inheritance of his brother. And it would not be considered his son, but his brother's son. That, so that all the land and inheritance would stay within the family. That's the way God set it up under the law. So the Sadducees, who are sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection, they tried to trick the Lord in their little uh, stupid doctrines, just like all these false doctrine people on YouTube and Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and, and all these other cults out there with all their wacky false doctrines, the Essenes, you know, saying you've got to be a vegetarian, etc., etc. Jesus is not the God. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. And then in verse 13, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Hallelujah. And He was with God and is God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, <laughs> uh, uh, so they're challenging Jesus. And they said, okay, there's a guy who he died with no issue of children. So his brother would, you know, take her as a wife to produce heirs for his brother. And then he died. And on and on and on. There's seven brothers. And all seven brothers married the one woman. They all, none of them produced any seed. Obviously, in this story, the woman was barren. Or, you know, she had some medical reason why she couldn't produce fruit, you know. And so she died. And all the seven husbands died. And there was no children. So the Sadducees asked Jesus, in that case, when they get to heaven... Whose wife will she be since she was married to all seven? So they're mocking the law. They're mocking the resurrection. They're mocking God's law straight from the, the law of Moses, from the Torah. You know, from the Tanakh is the Hebrew name for the Old Testament. The Torah is the first five books, the, 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 the law, the measuring stick, uh, the first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch as some people call it. And then the Tanakh is the whole Old Testament. So anyway... So they are mocking the, the Torah, the law of God. They're mocking God's plan. They're mocking the resurrection that we see in the Bible. They're mocking these things. So what did Jesus say to them? See, they thought they created some kind of catch-22, like, oh, well, you know, you can't have seven husbands. You know, they're using their human logic, just like those people that use their human logic to say there's no rapture. When I listen to people, even though I like Alex Jones's exposure of the New World Order, I, I, sometimes I hear him start preaching that, that the rapture is from the devil and all this, and deception by the New World Order. And I hear him say the same old stuff, not Bible verses, not quoting from the Word of God, but just like those Sadducees that come in and say something that's a false dilemma. It's a false paradigm. It's, it's, it's based on lies. It's based on wrong doctrine. So instead of Jesus debating them with them, like other people on YouTube who will have a good intention, but they come on YouTube and start debating you know, with people about, is there a pre-tribulation rapture, etc. Instead of preaching the word, that's what I try to do, brothers and sisters. I would probably have a whole lot more views if I was more, you know, attacking people and calling people out. There are people on YouTube that are professional calling people out. Instead of preaching the word in love, they're, you know, and speaking truth, they correct errors by the word. They go negative and, you know, attack people all the time. You know, and I, I shed myself from companionship with those who, as the Bible says, mark those who call the who calls division among the brethren, you know, mark those who cause division, you know, and separate yourself from them. So there are at least two ministers on YouTube who cause division all the time. And, and I, you know, I don't, I'm not going to go down the route of in the flesh, but our battle is not against the flesh, but against the spirit, you know, powers and principalities. You know, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces. We got to go up high. You know, you don't get in an airplane. You know, I had a dream one time about that. You know, you don't get in an airplane and drive the airplane down the road and run into everything. The Lord gave me a dream, you know, about not giving it to him. And in my dream, I was flying an airplane and I was driving down the road. I went under underpasses and broke the wings off and driving. I kept saying to myself, why am I not flying a plane in the air? Why am I on the ground driving the plane? You know, and that was the dream. I, as a matter of fact, I, whenever I get into a situation where I'm not giving it to the Lord and not going in the spirit and staying in the flesh, dealing with a situation like with the orphanages or whatever, the Lord will give me a reoccurring dream. You know, flying a plane, but not flying it. Driving a plane down the highway and running into stuff instead of just flying right over the top and you're clear of all the obstacles, right? So, those Sadducees kept 
mocking the word of God, mocking the resurrection, mocking the Lord, trying to challenge the Lord with their false paradigm. It's like the false paradigms of there's no pre-tribulation rapture. Oh, you think you're too good to be fed to the lions? Oh, well, you know, there are people who will get killed right now today. You think that means you won't be killed? You know, these unbiblical, no Bible verses to support their emotional human logic, just like those Sadducees. That's why it's, I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to declare it in this video. I'm going to start calling people that don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture sad, you see. They're sad, you sees. Because if I thought I was going to have to stay here and, and have my head chopped off and not take the mark, I would be sad, you see, also. Praise God Almighty, brothers and sisters. I'm not a sad, you see. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. I'm looking up for the blessed hope. The blessed hope is the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, the rapture. Hallelujah. I've got that laid out in detail with Bible verses. These things I talk about lots of times. Brothers and sisters, that's why I know many of you, it's a problem in the end times church. People don't want to take the time to learn the, the correct biblical doctrines. On the website of the Church of the Firstborn, I have a statement of faith, a very detailed 16-part statement of faith, and one of those is about the blessed hope. The blessed hope is the resurrection of the church, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Talking about the rapture, not the second coming, but the rapture. That's the glory, the blessed hope of the church. Uh, staying here and having your head chopped off if you don't take the mark in earthquakes and famines and pestilence is not a blessed hope. That is not a blessed hope. A blessed hope is for those who are watching and waiting and praying like the five wise virgins, having enough oil being found worthy to escape these things. Luke 21, 36, hallelujah, as Jesus said, talking about the tribulation, watch therefore and pray always that you be kind of worthy to escape these things. What things? The tribulation. And stand before the Son of Man, hallelujah, to escape these things. Revelation 3, 10, because you have patiently kept my word, I will keep you out of the hour of temptation that will come upon all the people of the earth to try all those that live on the earth. Hallelujah, it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, Yahweh's strange work, the day of the Lord. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters, you don't want to be here. You want to be seated far above all this destruction, far above all powers and principalities, and seated there with the Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest on his throne. Hallelujah. And being ready for the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb. But before that, we have... I'm doing all this theology stuff. As I, do, I don't want to skip over it. i got to throw it out there. We have the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ. We will be judged by, for the works that we've done on earth and receive our crowns, or we will have no crowns. A lot of people who think they have lots of crowns are going to have none because they did it. It says that our deeds will go through the fire, whether they be of wood, hay, or stubble, or whether they be of gold and, and silver and jewels, whether they will survive the fiery judgment of the Lord, hallelujah, of our deeds the works we've done in the name of Jesus. Did we do it to get honor to ourselves? Did we do it to bring honor to the Lord? Did we do it for, you know, because we care about people? Or did we do it to bring glory to God? You know, all of those things. And that's a whole other topic. Anyway, brothers and sisters, i got to finish that story now, don't I? You guys who watch me for years and years, all the years I've been on YouTube, you know my how I go. I'll, I'll, <laughs> So this is all the people that are, have ADD. Every once in a while, I have somebody with ADD and they can't, they can't, they can't under, follow it. But I, I'm on the same topic, and I'm following. These are points along the same road to the main point I'm making about the Sadducees, about the resurrection. These are these are sub points to that, and it's and it's just done in a different manner, brothers and sisters, as the Lord leads me by His Spirit. So the Sadducees challenged the Lord and said. You know, this, this woman had seven different husbands, these seven brothers, and they all died, and there's no kids. So who's the husband of this woman? Which one of these seven brothers? And so Jesus said to them, well, you know, you misunderstood. You do err. You do err. Just like those uh, people that don't believe in the rapture. You do err in your understanding of the Word of God. Because God said, speaking from the burning bush, when the Lord spoke to Moses, He didn't say, I was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lots of people can't get that when they read the text. Brothers and sisters, God is saying that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are still alive. I am, not I was. That's why Jesus, you know, from the burning bush, I am that I am. That's why Jesus said all those different I ams. He didn't say I was the bread of life or I'm going to be the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. Hallelujah. 
praise God Almighty, brothers and sisters. He is, I am the resurrection and the life is one of these that I, I should do a, a sermon on each one of the I am's that the Lord did. You know, I can only do the videos that the Lord would lead me to give, brothers and sisters, and this is the one he led me in now. Hallelujah, praise God. Another thing about the way I do my sermons, I usually start with either no message or a different message than what I give. See, I, I'm going to I'm going to surrender to the Spirit. I'm not going to be bound and boxed in with this, you know, where you put your sermon out a year in advance. All these mega churches and most even smaller churches, they have programs and they have it laid out weeks and months or a whole quarter in advance and all this. I'm not going to do this. I don't want to be part of no old dead religion. If you want to be part of dead religion, then you're in the wrong place because I'm bringing a, the the by the grace of God and by His Spirit, I'm bringing that manna, that fresh manna that's fresh today. Because he's the I am. Next week, it's, it's the I was. Or in the, in the week after that, you know, it's the I'm going to be. We don't need the I'm going to be or the I was. We need the I am. That's right now. A fresh, fresh, rema word from God. We need fresh manna every day. Just like brothers and sisters with the children of, in the wilderness. When they had that manna, if they tried to keep it to the next day, it would be rotten. The only time they kept it one other day was for a Sabbath day, a holiday or some, you know, one of the Jewish feast days or one of the, uh, of the Sabbath. They would gather twice as much the day before and then they wouldn't gather on those holidays and then they would have, their manna would not go bad. But if they tried to gather like two weekdays, like say Monday morning they went out and gathered, then Tuesday morning they, they tried to keep that stuff till morning, it would be rotten. It would be full of maggots. God did that. What was God showing us? He was showing us to rely on God. That's why Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. That prayer that people call the Lord's Prayer, everybody calls it the Lord's Prayer, but it's actually not the Lord's Prayer. It's the prayer that the Lord gave to the church. The, the, the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And then he gave a prayer to them. The Lord's Prayer is really at the Last Supper in John chapter 17 when Jesus is praying to the Father. That's the Lord's Prayer, him praying. But the prayer that he gave us to teach us how to pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you know. And in that prayer he says, you know, give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. You're talking about that fresh manna. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. That's why Jesus said in John 6, he is the manna that came down from heaven. He said, your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they are dead. And, and another example of these false Pharisees, Sadducees, and, and false people on YouTube today, they said, Moses gave us manna from heaven. Jesus said, Moses didn't give you any manna. God gave you manna from heaven. Hallelujah. But your fathers ate that manna, and then they later died. But this manna is such a kind, if you eat it, you will never die. Hallelujah. That's why he told the woman at the well, Talking about the water of the well, John chapter 4. He said, I have a water to give you that's such a kind. If you drink of it, you'll never thirst again. Hallelujah. He is that living water. He is that bread that came down from heaven. He is the manna. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. That's why when you hear all these people on television, all etc., supposed to be prophets, and they're just talking prosperity and things like that, and there's nothing wrong with talking about God blessing His people. And there's times when we that most of the time we should be talking about repentance. We should be talking about those things that God wants us to do in the prophetic. And sometimes we talk about God blessing His people and exhorting His people. That's also true. But brothers and sisters, my Bible says, and your Bible says, that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Yeshua. So every prophecy, everything that we talk about always has to come back to one place, to that one who spoke from the burning bush, who do you think spoke from the burning bush? The Bible tells us it was Yeshua, Hamashiach. It was the great I am that I am. It was the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. The fairest of 10,000, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon, uh, you know, the balm of Gilead. Hallelujah. That's him. There is a fountain who is a king. Hallelujah. That knows how to delivereth. His people from bondage. Hallelujah. From the snare of the fowler. Just as he delivered Egypt out of bondage. He delivers us. Hallelujah. Out of the bondage of sin. For Jesus said those whom the Son sets free are free indeed. Hallelujah. He has set us free. And he has made us glad. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. 
He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Hallelujah. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. You know, that's from one of the Psalms. You know, we say Psalms, but they're songs. Most, a lot of them were written by King David. Those Psalms, one was written by Moses, the Song of Moses. Uh, it's been a while since, it seems like it's Psalm 68 or 71, 73. I can't remember, brothers and sisters, you have to look it up. Moses wrote one of the Psalms. Hallelujah, go look at it. Praise God Almighty, through whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all ye creatures here below. Praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, that resurrection day is coming. Hallelujah. That resurrection day is coming. Praise the living God. We're going to be caught up out of here. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trump will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Hallelujah. We'll take off this corruptible and put on incorruptible. 1 Corinthians 50, 15, 50, 51, 52, brothers and sisters. Let's, let's worship the Lord. I want to play a song and worship the Lord. Uh... Uh, I'm going on. Let's worship the Lord with a song, brothers and sisters. I know a lot of times when you go to church, they have a song in the beginning. The song's in the beginning. You know, whenever I do one, this is what I do. I, you know, I planted many churches. And, and a lot of the pastors, they have a fit because I say, hey, I don't want to do the singing in the beginning. Sometimes I do. I want to do the preaching in the beginning, and then I want to do uh, singing and then pray over people about the message. Like if you get a message... Of evangelism, then you pray for people to be saved, rededicate their lives, repent of sins, etc. If you get a message about healing, and it's from God, there should be a move of the Spirit of God for healing. If you have a message about baptism of the Holy Spirit, there should be a move of God by His Spirit for baptism of the Holy Spirit in the church after the message. Signs and wonders follow the Word of God. These signs shall follow those who believe. Hallelujah. In my name. They'll cast out devils. In my name, they'll speak new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mark chapter 16. Let's sing, uh, or let's hear a song. You can sing it or not. Let's listen to it. I'm going on. We're going on to the rapture, brothers and sisters. Let's listen to it. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope you guys can hear it. I mean to go right on until the crowd is one. I mean to fight the fight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going on. I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on. I've got the link to this video on the church. Songs recommended by me. Let's go on. Let's go on to the final triumph. To the final triumph. Hallelujah.
going on going on and going on I'm going on until the final triumph I'm going on Fight the fight of faith till life on earth is done. I'll never more turn back. Defeat I shall not know. My God will give me victory if onward I shall go. I'm going on. I'm going on. Until the final triumph. Until the final triumph. Hallelujah. We're going on. I'm going on. I'm going on. Until Brothers and sisters, you can find these songs on the website. I've got songs rep recommended by Brother Patrick, uh, Pastor Patrick, and I think that uh, I, I picked some end times movies too. There's an end time rapture tribulation movie called The Tribulation with Gary Busey in it and Howie Mandel and, and, and Margot Kidder, I think is her name, the wife of Superman and the First Superman. You can't get any better than, than, than Gary Busey being left behind and being confused with a head injury. I mean, it just fits right in. Because in real life, he did have a head injury and a motorcycle wreck. And he, and, he, and he doesn't have to act to do it. Howie Mandel, of course, is a paranoid in the movie and paranoid in real life, too. So it's an awesome movie. It's called Tribulation. And it's a whole series done by Dr. Jack Benimpi and John Hagee. And it's pretty theologically sound, too. I think there's the list is also, it's on the channel. This channel, Church of the Firstborn YouTube channel, it's on here as a playlist. And I need to add more Christian movies to it. And the hymnal songs are on there. And then I'm making a playlist of sermons that I recommend. Dr. Ron Phillips has got a, a two-part sermon here that's also on the channel as a playlist. Church of the Firstborn playlist. Let's sing one more song, brothers and sisters. For a minute, let's go out with a song. And I'm going to pray for you. Oh, yes. It's a classic. Whoa. On Calvary, you save a wretch like me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I repented of my sins. Hallelujah. And won the victory. Victory. Yeah. Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. sisters you know I'm just thinking I want to just pray you know and, and I've done this before many times in the Philippines and I don't know I'm just not sure how 
far I'll go with it tonight. It's up to the Lord. But just pray the fire of God down on you to be revived. You know, revival is the, the holiness of God, the sanctity of God, the sanctification, the the Beatitudes. Hallelujah, I hear the Lord say. You know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's the Rima word right now from the Lord. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? Do you come before the Lord and call upon His name and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I come before you. I've fallen short of your glory. I have sinned and fallen short of your perfection, Lord God. And I know right now without a shadow of a doubt that I need to be redeemed. Have you been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. Have you been redeemed? Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. I am. I'm under the blood. I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. May those words be as honey and candy in your mouth. A sweet savor as I offering your, your words, your lips. A sweet smelling savor and a sacrifice to our Lord. Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. Offer your Lift your voice and offer yourself as a sweet sacrifice unto our Lord. Stop being an observer. That's the problem with all these churches. Uh, they, they, they're a one-man show. God didn't call us to a one-man show. Go read your book of Acts. You'll see. You, and in 1 Corinthians, when it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, chapter 12, 13 and 14, it talks about let you know people prophesy and then let others interpret and then let the elders judge whether it be from God. It didn't say have a one-man show. It's a participation where two or more of you are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. Hallelujah. All of the church is supposed to participate in the gifts of the Spirit, the working of the Spirit, the breaking of bread. Hallelujah. And the drinking of the fruit of the vine. Hallelujah. Praise God as you come together in the holy communion, brothers and sisters. And, and I just get it in my mind right now as I'm saying this from the Lord. We need to do communion by the grace of God. If it's in my spirit, I remember we'll do communion next week, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Now I'm going to pray and I'm going to uh, call down the fire of God upon you. Hallelujah. That you might be filled with His Spirit. Hallelujah. That you, that you, that you, that you go over, over that into the river of living water. Many of you try to get into the river of living water and you just want to go ankle deep so your feet are on the ground. Sometimes knee deep. You know, maybe even waist deep. You know, but you got to get on out in the, in the deep. Deep calleth unto deep, the Bible says. you got to get out into the deep end of the pool, brothers and sisters. Into the deep end of the river that the river might carry you where He wills. As Jesus said, you know. You know that the Spirit goes where He wants to go like the wind. Hallelujah. You know, even as the, the people that wrote the Bible says they were carried along by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Are you carried along by the Spirit? What does it say? Those who are led by the Spirit. These are the sons of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. You know, the Lord always brings me back to that. You know, you got to break it down. Piece by piece. There's a fresh wind and a fresh fire. That's why I'm preaching again, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it says, and there are a lot of people say, oh, you know, this, uh, uh, these old uh, Pharisees, these old uh, Presbyterians and such not, like uh, uh, John MacArthur and all these people talking about strange fire. They're talking about, uh, you know, a mental ascent and what's in your mind instead of by the Spirit. But the Bible says in the New Testament too, it says that men of old were carried along by the Spirit. You know, that's how they wrote the Bible. They were carried along by the Spirit, by the wind of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's what the, the one that we need to be carried by. As it says, as I just quoted from that text, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. Hallelujah. Are you led by the Spirit? Are you led by what you've been taught, by the cunning devices of men, like the Sadducees and like the Pharisees? You're in these different camps. You know, I, I, I'm a, 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 an Armenian. I'm a Calvinist. I'm, I, you know, I, I believe in the rapture. I don't believe in the rapture. These different camps of these Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, etc., Hallelujah, I'm as Calvinist as the Bible is Calvinist. I'm as Armenian, which is free will. That means, talking about free will versus uh, Calvinism, we're talking about uh, predestination. I'm as predestination as the Bible is predestination. And there's many Bible verses talking about that. Jesus said, no man can come to me unless the Father draws them. The, 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 the Pharisee said, why don't we follow you? Jesus said, because you're not my sheep. You know, so there's Bible verses that support uh, predestination and there's Bible verses that support free will, brothers and sisters. So as free will as the Bible is, I'm free will. As, as, as uh, Calvinistic as the Bible is, I'm Calvinistic. 
as uh, doctrinally based as the, Bi as the Bible is, I'm doctrinally based. As spiritually based as the Bible is, I am, brothers and sisters. I won't be bound by the cunning devices of men, but by the Spirit and the Word of God. Hallelujah. I pray that you'll join me in this to be part of the firstborn of the resurrection of the dead and join the firstborn there. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 12, when we come there and meet Him, in heaven, hallelujah, after the rapture. Praise God, I'm going to pray right now in Jesus' name as the Lord would give me the utterance and the strength, hallelujah, to pray down the fire of God upon you, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I ask the Father, hallelujah, to let His fire fall upon you right now. Waves of His glory, waves of His anointing, waves of the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Lord, anoint Thy people, Lord. Anoint Thy people, Lord, as they come before You for repentance, Lord. Let them be purged with hyssop, with the blood of the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Lord, that they be cleansed and be sanctified. Hallelujah. That they might be glorified at that last trump. That they might be glorified. Hallelujah, Lord. Let them be sanctified. Hallelujah, Lord. Let them be justified, Lord, by your blood, by your spirit, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, just release the fire, the fire upon them right now. I speak fire, fire in Jesus' name. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fire, fire of the Most High God. Holy fire of righteousness. The fire from the burning bush be upon you in Jesus' name that you may get the revelation of Jesus Christ, that He is the I am that I am. Hallelujah. That He is the mighty God. Hallelujah. Yehovah. Hallelujah. Yehovah Nisi. God is my banner. Hallelujah. Though man may forsake me, though my mother and father may forsake me, the Lord shall not forsake me. Hallelujah. The Lord just giving me that ream of word for somebody, for all of us. Psalm 27. Though my mother and father forsake me. Hallelujah. The Lord is with me. Behold, the Lord is near to those who fear Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I speak to the fire, the peace, the joy, the deliverance, the sanctification, the glorification. Hallelujah. The magnification of the Lord be upon you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just receive, brothers and sisters. Receive. Receive and soak and marinate and walk in the glory of the Most High God. Hallelujah. The spirit of revival be upon you. Hallelujah. And deliverance. Hallelujah. For the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into Him and they are saved. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in to him and they are saved the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run in to him and they are saved hallelujah brothers and sisters i speak right now the blessings of abraham isaac and jacob upon you i speak the everlasting covenant of peace be upon you in the name of yeshua Hamashiach, the delight of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord keeps speaking to me, brothers and sisters. Right, I'm going. And that's why I'm hearing the Lord speak as I'm speaking what He told me a minute ago. Praise God. Praise God through whom all blessings flow. He is a mighty God. He is the great God. He is the Redeemer of all mankind. Hallelujah. He is the delight of our souls. He is that candy. Hallelujah to our spirit. Hallelujah. The joy, all the joy you've ever known in this world, uh, 
uh, of, of when you got candy as a child. God is a sweeter, sweeter than honey, hallelujah, and greater, hallelujah, than everything in this whole creation is one drop in the ocean to the greatness of the love of God. Hallelujah. Your love is like the ocean. We're drowning in your presence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your love is like the ocean. Hallelujah, Lord. We're drowning in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. I can keep going and going and going. Our mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. He is a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's a worthy God. Hallelujah. He's worthy, greatly and worthy to be praised is our Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Bless His name, brothers and sisters. Bless His name because the day cometh and the hour is here. Hallelujah. That all those in the graves will hear the, name, the Lord calling them. Hallelujah. To come forth because He is the resurrection and the life. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name.